Now this one is an old but highly successful RTA from Mike Vapes, redesigned to take two calls this time. Hey folks, Corax here. Will this be another success story? Let's find out. Intake Duel by Mike Vapes. In the package, you will find a user manual, which actually is nothing but a quick start guide. Concise and clear though. A conditional warranty card, valid for 6 months. And a nice little spares baggie. Containing an Allen key, you will need it for the post screws. Two o-rings of different sizes. Two pieces of Japanese cotton. Same like KGD, Shiseido, Muji, etc. Four extra grub screws for the posts. And two Clapton coils. There is no nomenclature provided. But by the feel of it, I think these are 32 over 26 AWG Canthal. And here are the three main things of the box, all well secured for transit. You receive a spare bubble glass tank, which is sturdy and very well made. A coil leg sizer tool. This one will come very handy, you will see that soon. And the main unit. The Intec Dual RTA. That's it. There is nothing else in the box. CNC cut logo with various accents going around. Especially on the dome. This will help grabbing it for rotation. I am liking the looks of it so far. There is one strange thing here. AFC ring is not on the base, but on the top. It is a bottom coiled addy nonetheless. So the airflow is managed differently. We will see that soon. Massive airflow slits. These are 10 mm by 2 mm. Two of them on opposite sides. And the AFC ring stops at both the ends. I like that. An extremely wide board 810 drip tip over 10 mm open internally and about 17 mm externally. This is thick but has a slight concaveness in the middle. Notice the ledge near the ends. The drip tip's actual inlet is not that wide though. It is just 6.5 mm bore. And yes, it is a standard 810 mouthpiece, which can be swapped with any other 810 drip tip of your preference. This is also a top filling addy. A slight press and then a quarter of a counterclockwise turn dislodges the top cap, revealing two huge juice ports. These are over 11 and half mm long and 4 mm wide. Oh, by the way, the chimney is around 5 and half mm board. So the 6 and half mm inlet of the drip tip and its 10 mm internal seems just for aesthetic purposes. The top cap remains sealed and cushioned by this silicon gasket. 
and the locking system is achieved by this protruding notch which marries up with the groove cut around the chimney end. Overall it is quite a hefty beast. A 26 mm diameter attic which is 46 and half mm tall drip tip to base. Without the drip tip it is around 40 mm long. We have two options for the tank here. The plain one takes in around 5 ml of juice while this bubble tank holds a whopping 7 milliliters. Wow! And it is goddamn heavy too. 65 grams is something while a fully loaded intake is around 71 grams. There are some markings on the bottom as well which are laser etched and each attic comes serialized. Neat thread work, brass 510 which protrudes a bit and is also adjustable. The AFC ring moves along this cutout thus stopping in either ends of the air slots. It as usual is press fit and has a slug on the top side to move inside the cutout. These accents make it easy to unscrew the base. And these are the air slots on the chamber ceiling which marry with these two poles to channel air onto the coils. Yes, these look like posts but they are not. In fact, there are no posts in this atty at all. This is a postless deck and the terminals are on the base, positive and negative, separated by a PEK insulator, two coils and their legs are secured by grub screws which are tightened from the sides of the deck. Air flows down the channel and hit the coils from the sides and because the channels need to marry up while tightening the base onto the tank, the air slots on the chamber ceiling are kept suspended, free to rotate. You will get it because the base will find its way and snap into place before you start tightening it. Quite a deep wick well on the deck, fed by juice coming from the side. The glass tank is held pressed over an o-ring. Nice chunky well cut glass. which sits over a black gasket on the base. And here is the atty completely broken down. Top cap, drip tip, AFC ring, chimney unit, glass tank and the deck base. Total 6 parts. Now let's wash it, lube it and rebuild it. The coil legs go in here and to make things easier this size of tablet is already included in the package. I will be using the supplied coils as well. These are 3 mm diameter claptons and these long legs need to be cut to size. The provided tool helps you cut them to 5.8 mm the advocated right size. You can of course play with your preference of leg length but the modder's choice seem to be well suited for this atty. Use the supplied allen key to tighten the grub screws. At this height the coil is well placed for a direct air hit from the sides. Dress it up and attach the second coil. Thank you. 
time to check the resistance and fire it up. Point 1 ohm and hitting it with a conservative 20 watts. Try to always underpower while testing. Strum the coils to help them catch up. Looking good? Now let's wick it. But there is one more thing. Oh, before we proceed, let me tell you once again that you can absolutely set it up with a single coil as well. The coil is placed in an angle for that and the intake dual works perfectly fine. But let's stick to our dual coils in this review. Again, using the supplied cotton, these Japanese cotton pads have a hardened top layer. Peel one off before using them as a wick. Then roll it. I always do that as you might have noticed in all my videos. A piece of cotton is not a wick unless you make it one. But that's me. Now I will snip them off roughly at the base's outer boundary. Like so. And use the leftover piece for the second wick. Like so. Then the ends need to be dropped into the two wick wells of the base. No fancy efforts here, just tuck them down. Like so. You can notice them through the juice feed ports. Repeat the same on the other side. And the job is done. Once again, don't flare the tails, don't trim them, don't do nothing. Just cut the ends to the base's boundary and tuck them down. These will perform well, whatever the viscosity of your e-liquid is. Using Dinner Ladies Purple Rain today, a British e-liquid. These are lovely juices folks, did a review of them already. This time firing it at 45 watts. Yes, all good. Now let's reassemble everything up. Ensure that the AFC is closed before pouring juice into the ADE. This is with any top filling RTA, else you are likely to flood the chamber. And always keep some space, never fill it to 100%. That little space helps maintaining negative air pressure inside the tank and your ADE will feed well. Open the AFC, 0.12 ohms and firing it at 45 watts. Intake Dual by Mike Vapes. Ah, fantastic. I have been vaping this for weeks now, gone through various juice mixes and it keeps up very well. I have nothing but good vibes about it. So here are my overall thoughts. The best thing I like about it is the flavor. You see, dual coil RTAs are never as good as single coiled ones in the flavor front. But this one is doling out the same quality of flavor as any good RTA. Wow! And the second thing I like about it is its ease of use. It is easy in every front folks. Easy to set up, easy filling method, deck accessible and whatnot. 
a very well thought out design in my opinion. And to top that, it is also leak proof with no air holes under on the base and the top AFC being sealed from the tank, there is no way juice can seep out in this attic. Well, unless you flood the chamber that is and inverse the attic over that. But that can be taken care of if you wick the way I showed you in this video. Don't skimp on cotton and it will not flood. And that brings me to its airflow. Yes, it is uniquely done. Sealed, channeled, side as well as under the coil, etc. But the overall effect is both dramatic as well as sufficient for every type of vapor. Dual coils accepts fancy coils, massive AFC slit two ways, so it definitely is a direct lung atty, right? But shut the AFC down to bare minimum, close it completely if you may, and there you have a perfect MTL draw as well. Best of both worlds, eh? And finally, I am also loving the looks of it. Soft graphics, CNC cut at that, not laser etched. Decent accents on the dome as well as on the AFC and the base. Stubby drip tip, this atty looks great on every mod in my book. A very versatile atty my friends and qualitatively produced as well. Everything cannot be hunky-dory, can it? Well, it nearly is. There are two things you got to take note though. The vapor travel from the coil to the mouthpiece is quite a distance. So the top cap and the mouthpiece end never gets hot. But the body, hmm, that's another matter. It does get very hot my friends. Dual coils, super sabom. 45 watts though some of you are likely to push it further so it is kind of expected you will have to be cautious handling it this is a borderline burn hazard but not so if you run it in single coil mode secondly the bloody thing is also quite heavy at 65 grams this is one of the heaviest atties i have and even if you used beastly mods, it still remains top heavy. So forget about carrying it around unless you want to develop some biceps. That said, for an in-home use RTA, this intake dual is unbeatable in my opinion. It is a well done RTA, absolutely carries the original lineage to the hilt. Superb remastering here and same great vape. Wow! And now geared towards cloud chasers. Thus Og Vape and Mike have again nailed it. This also is going to be another success story for sure. It deserves 5 out of 5. But I cut it a little short just because of the heat issue. Sorry Nico. But thank you for sending it to me. This is a keeper. Yes folks, at 4.5 stars, this RTA is wonderful. If you want a 2 coil RTA, this intake dual is a potent option to look for. And that's my final point. Thanks for watching my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share and subscribe. Because vaping is a healthier alternative. And we have the right to make that choice.